Hello and welcome to the debrief. I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler, and my other co-host not here today. She unfortunately is ill. Becky Scarcello will be back next week. We hope uh, if everything goes according to plan. And I know she would be bummed because she would very much want to be here for this. She is a huge music fan. Oh really? Yes, absolutely. Why wish she was here too? I know she's a, she she would love to be here. So uh, we'll connect you two at some point. Uh, I do have with me Efrod Kasimi. He is not only a six-time Emmy nominee. He anchors the morning newscast as well as the noon newscast on WDEV Local 4, but he also has a brand new R&B album out. Uh, it came out in November. It's called Music, and there's a brand new single called I'm Leaving. Welcome yes. to the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I love being here on The Debrief, and uh, I wish that Becky was here, so we certainly wish her well, and hopefully uh, yeah. we'll get to check in with her next time. I'm going to tell you, this is, uh, you know, you can't just rely on your good looks on, uh, on <laughs> radio here. This is all audio. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, it's nice to have a fellow broadcaster uh, on the podcast. It's good to be well. here. Good so, to be thank here. you so much. I know how early you get up in the morning as well. Oh, it's not that early. It's Everybody how early do you get up? I mean, what time do people get out of the bars? Like two o'clock, you know, it's just around that time. Do you, do you really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like two, two thirty. You know, it kind of depends on how tired I am from the night before. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, between 2 and 2.30, it depends, you know, on if I hear the alarm go off or, you know, if I'm wide awake and ready to go. And what time are you actually in the station? In the station at 3.30, sometimes 3.45, wow. you know, but yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I tell you, I did a radio morning show for like two weeks. I oh, filled in. Only two weeks? Only two weeks. Okay. And you thought, well, and then the college semester when I was in college. I did it for college. Gotcha, week. gotcha. And, and you think, oh, this is going to be great. You know, I'm done at like 9 a.m. or whatever. Yeah. And I have the rest of my day to do whatever. And what they don't tell you is you crash at like <laughs> 2 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty good at not crashing. I have two kids, and they don't, they don't understand the word crash. So right. yeah. you got to just keep it going. Um, you know, plus you got to work out, and you've got other things to take care of around the house, at home. And, you know, you got friends that want to hang out with you when they get off work at 5 o'clock. So it's like, eh, there's no such thing as crashing, at least not in, in my world. Yeah, I believe you know? it. So, so you not only have this job as a full-time on-air anchor, mm-hmm. but you are also a singer. Yeah. And a, and a musician. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about that. I mean, congratulations on the brand new album. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's called Music, and we just released it. It's available everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, all those things. And yeah, I've been singing since I was three years old. That's what my parents tell me, at least. And you know, we've got the photo to prove it. My parents have had the same photo on the mantle on the fireplace, singing at church uh, ever since I was a kid. And, uh, yeah, I mean, here I am, 34, you wow. know, so it's been, you do the math. <laughs> and this is, you've, you've had an EP before, right? But this is the first album? Yeah, so I released an EP when I was in college. And, uh, you know, we'll get into that story in just a little bit. But, yeah, this is the first, this is my debut album, music. So this is a long time coming. You know what? It really is. It really is. My story's pretty wild. It's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, it's a long time coming. It's a labor of love. And everybody asks about the title. So it's music, which I can, I love writing stories. So I consider this the story of my life. So this is like my news and it's set to music. And so when I was trying to figure out what to call the album, I said, okay, so this is news about my life set to music, combine that into one word and you got music. It was kind of like a a no brainer in my, my opinion, you know? Let's talk about your inspirations because the sound to me mm-hmm. is something that's very familiar. I mean, this actually sounds like a lot of the R and B that I grew up with. Well, that's a good thing. Um, I have been inspired by some of the greats. Um, I grew up listening to Michael Jackson. Yep. Um, there is not a Michael Jackson song that I have not heard. My parents. I remember when I was a kid, my dad. When the Thriller music video came out, my dad was so mean. He used to take my head or my brother's head, and we were trying to turn away from from watching the music video and he would force us to like watch it. So I know every scary moment. I know all the dance moves. I know when he turns around and gives that evil eye at the end. And you know, as a kid, I was very young. I was in like the single digits when that uh, music video came out 
And it was terrifying. I remember thinking it was real. You know, you drive past a cemetery and you think that Michael Jackson's going to come up or that people are going to just start rising from the dead. And um, yeah, so Michael Jackson was a huge inspiration. Uh, as I grew into my own, I remember listening to Usher as a kid, mm -hmm. uh, music soul child, a, a neo soul artist, a lot of Brian McKnight, um, who I've had the pleasure of meeting twice now. He was on uh, he was on our station a, a few months ago, I want to say, maybe a year ago. Um, who else? Who else? Trey Songs, Chris Brown. Um, Neo, yep. You have also had the pleasure of meeting and interviewing, you know. So nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, what is your songwriting process? I mean, talk a little bit about oh, the how that songwriting works. process. Well, first of all, I'll say this: uh, songwriting is like a personal thing for me. It's very therapeutic, and typically, I write songs when I'm ever in an extreme emotional moment. Whether that's extremely happy, extremely sad, extremely angry yeah. about something. And that typically inspires me to come up with a concept, to come up with uh, lyrics. And then I'm able to put that into a song. I've got a couple of great producers that I work with. And, you know, um, I, I write based off of the, the music that I hear and, and we create. And for you, is it lyrics first, and then you come up with a melody for it? Or? Not necessarily. Sometimes it's just a word. Like, sometimes it's just a, a, a title, you know? So, like, when I came up with the album title, I came up with that first, and then I said, okay, I want to write a song called Music that kind of explains what this album is going to be about. So then, uh, with that in mind, I, I had the title of what I wanted that song to be, and then I kind of worked with the producers to get music that would go along with how I felt a song called Music would go. Right. You know, so, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> how do you line yourself up with producers? I mean, you're not from the Detroit area. You You've been here, what? Six years now? Almost six years, yeah. Wow. It'll be six years this year in August. Congratulations. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of research, um, listened to a lot of samples from, from different producers all over the country, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the producers I've worked with, uh, Atlanta and South Carolina. Oh, okay. So they're not mm -hmm. based here in Detroit. No, no. no. But you recorded this album? I recorded the entire album, Get Fresh Studio, here in Detroit, right on Jefferson. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. And the two singles that I released before the album came out, a Christmas single and um, a cover song by Music Soul Child, one of my, one of my all-time favorite artists. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and even started your own record label in the process. Yeah, you know, um, being that I've been doing this my entire life and I've, I've seen how the music industry has changed, I personally wanted to take ownership of, of my own music, my own music career, I guess you could say. And... I decided to start my own record label called Everything Ever Had Entertainment, started it last year, and started putting out music under that brand name. And the rest is history. Now, uh, are there other artists on the label at this point? Well, it's called Everything Ever Had Entertainment. So, so <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so as of right now, it's just it's just me. And, you know, I have my hands full because apparently this Everhard guy is a, a real, real character. Yeah. You know, so well, he, he keeps me around. busy. He does. Well, you, you do obviously do a lot. I mean, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about balancing the news career and, you know, your artistic career. Do you think I balance it? I, well, I, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. Do you? Sometimes I, I don't know how I do. But a lot of people have asked that, you know, and... I will say this. There are different titles that I have. Husband, father, brother, son, um, TV news anchor, songwriter, singer, um, friend. And some days the friend title needs a little bit more attention. And so, you know, I can drop certain things and pay more attention to my friends. Sometimes my wife needs me more. Sometimes uh, WDIV needs me more. There's breaking news going on. Um, or sometimes I've got a lot to write and I just want to be in the studio and record. So um, balance? No, I don't really think there is balance. I think it's more of like a juggling act. And it's like how many balls can you toss up in the air and catch all at the same time? Some days it's good. Some days it's bad. And some days you're like, how in the world did I make it to this point where I could lay my head down on the pillow and wake up the next morning. Look, I'd be exhausted if I just had your day job. <laughs> I, I mean, just that enough. Throw in the kids and the family right. and, and then everything else on top of it. Yeah. Are you performing live a lot? Yeah, I do perform live a lot. Um, a lot of people book me for, for different gigs, for different events. Um, I'm doing a show 
uh, coming up. I got two shows uh, coming up that I'm actually in the middle of rehearsal for, um, learning new songs that I've not performed before. You know, different people request you to perform different things for different shows. Um, I'm in the studio, you know, regularly recording. And yeah, so it's it's a lot to juggle. Wow. It is. Do you ever have trouble with worlds colliding? I mean, in terms of either your journalism career, how do they feel about the music career? You know, I hesitate in calling it a career um, because I just enjoy writing. I enjoy songwriting. So for me, it's, it's more of like when you, when you go home, you may like to read books or you may like to host a podcast or you may like to do whatever. Um, I enjoy songwriting. So it's something that I do no matter where I am, what I'm doing. I mean, if you look at my phone, I've got the voice recorder that has like, you know, 13 different songs that I'm trying to decide which one I want to record next in the studio, um, that I've recorded melodies and stuff like that at different places, whether it's the airport on vacation, um, you know, at work. Um, so I'm, I'm always writing songs and, for me, the songs are about me, so you know I, I would think that they like me. I'm, I'm still there, and um, yeah. I mean, there is that in that, you know, I think if you go back 10, 15, 20 years, before social media, uh-huh. before the internet, uh, public personalities could have different facets of their personality that they would only show you know this side to this audience and mm-hmm. this side to this audience and this side to this audience yeah. and now that we live in the era of transparency and mm-hmm. the era of authenticity it's kind of people want to see the whole package yeah. they want to get you know everything about you right yeah absolutely i mean do you find that do you find that your viewers for example also know about you know your music yeah no they certainly do i mean with social media which is uh, an area where i feel a lot of people are just choosing to be more of their authentic self, um, people are learning a lot about me from the music side to the parent side, to the husband side, um, to the brother, son side, you know, um, they're able to see all of those different layers now. And especially with the music too, which, you know, I've always been pretty transparent that I write music that's about me or inspired by some form uh, of, of uh, idea in my life. And they're able to read the lyrics and, and you know, sort of come to an idea as to what this form of art means. Right. So has it always been this way or was there ever a period where you couldn't pursue both? You know what? That's actually a good question. Uh, there was a time when I, I couldn't pursue both. I had been singing my entire life through college, I, I focused more on, on songwriting and, and making it my own. And I remember recording four songs while I was in college. And um, just as I was graduating, I released a four song EP. At the time, only iTunes was out. And that was like the most popular thing. And we had MySpace and stuff like that. And I got my first job in television. Mm-hmm. And I was still singing, performing in that market. And I remember the radio station got wind of it. And they picked up one of the songs off the EP. And they were playing it all day, all night. I mean, there wasn't a time where... I would get in the car and not hear at least one song from that EP, you know, and I moved markets, you know, how this industry works. And I remember getting a phone call about, Hey, we'd like to bring you on as an anchor at said station. And I was ecstatic. My girlfriend at the time became my fiance and uh, we were going to be married in about a month. And we were, we were elated. We were getting married in the current city and they were trying to bring us to another city. And I said, well, listen, sometimes you got to do hard things. So we moved to only to fly back to get married about a month later, but we sold everything. We sold everything that we could, except for what would fit in the back of one of our cars. We even sold one car and we started driving. It was an eight hour trip from city a where we get, where we were getting married to the, the new city where we were going to be living and, and then flying back to city a to, to get married. And about six hours into that eight hour drive, I got a call from the boss and they said, and mind you, I'd been singing and performing and stuff like that for markets prior to. And he says, what's this about an R&B music career? And I said, well, you know, I've always written music and, and sang in church and all that kind of stuff my whole life. And he says, well, I don't know if we can go through with this. We didn't know that you were, were a singer and we don't want that. So I'm going to have to call you back. I'm going to call and talk to corporate and, and kind of figure out what we're going to do. 
if we're going to go through with this contract. And, you know, I'm sitting there and driving, trying not to kind of look panicked because, A, we've got, you know, a few hundred guests flying in to be part of our wedding. We've got an apartment that we're getting ready to move into. And now, you know, my wife had quit her job. She didn't have a job getting ready to move into this new city. And uh, and we didn't have any stuff. Like, we, <laughs> we just had, you know, what would fit into the back of that car. And um, I remember it was like the longest hour yeah. of my life. And they called back and they said, okay, we're going to go through with the contract. Mind you, I was very young and I didn't understand how contracts worked. Right. And they would have had to anyway. But uh, they said, we're going to go through with the contract. But we're asking you and we're telling you, you can never sing again. And I said, okay, which I should have said no. Now looking back on the whole scenario, but they said, aside from never singing again, you got to get rid of everything that's on the internet, on iTunes. And if anybody asks you, if you sing in this market, uh, you're lying, tell them no. And so I said, okay, whatever you need, I'll do it. And I remember walking into the station and I would say if it wasn't the first day, it was definitely the second day, but people approached me, you know, we're news reporters and we're nosy and, you know, we are tasked with digging up information about people and people would say, is this you, you know, do you sing like, did you really? And I, I would say no. And they're like, but it's, you know, it says your name here, <laughs> but this is your isn't photo. that you? <laughs> and I was just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and eventually the question stopped because I think they realized, you know, what was what. And I worked there for about two years. And within that time, I don't know if you've ever had to give up anything that you have dreamed about, but when you have uh, a love, a passion for something, and you're forced to, to give it up for really no reason, I was never given a reason as to why, I never even really asked, but it does like a number to your, your, your psyche, to your mental health, really. And I remember having relatives, cousins, aunts, uncles that would get married and they would ask me, Hey, can you sing at our wedding? And I would say, Nope, I don't sing anymore. Wow. I remember moving to a new market and the same thing. Um, the boss didn't ask me about the music career. I had already given that up for two years, but when I got into the new newsroom, people did the same thing. Hey, do you sing? And I already kind of knew the song and dance, like no pun intended, but uh, I, I would tell people, no, that's not me. But mind you, uh, the news industry is not as big as people want to think. So some of those people had been in other markets with me where they'd seen me perform. And actually one person actually had purchased the EP and had a physical copy of it. And I would just say, no, nope, that's not me. I, I don't do anything like that. Fast forward to moving here to Detroit, kind of the same thing. And I got to a point where I said, this is something that I enjoy doing. I get to write stories for, for news, but they're about other people. You know, when you're going through things, um, at least for me, it's therapeutic to be able to, to write about them and to be creative. That's like my creative outlet. And whether people hear, hear it or not, and I said to myself, I want to get to a point where I can do this again, where it's okay. Man. And it's not like anybody else had told me no leading up to it. I was just so mentally scarred from it was nearly 10 years of, of being told at that beginning of that 10 year point, you can't do this anymore. You almost lost out on a, a career advancement opportunity that, uh, I had really just completely given it up. So I remember at one point people at WDIV, the management had asked me to sing at our company Christmas party. And I had never spoken about singing ever. And I thought maybe it was like some sort of setup, like a trap, you know, oh, we're going to find out about this and we're going to say, no, we, you know, we don't like you anymore or whatever. And I thought about it and I said, this is what I've been doing my whole life, except for the past 10 years because of one opportunity. Right. And so I said, I'm just going to give it a shot. Like, what's the worst that could happen? And I did. And they loved it. And next thing you know, I sang live at our station fireworks. We were the only station to broadcast the fireworks here in Detroit live. And then people in the community started asking me like, Hey, where can we buy your music? And I'm thinking, I don't have any music. That was nearly 10 years ago. And, um, I, I don't have any music. So I went into the studio and that's when I recorded the Christmas single and a radio friend of mine who actually owns a radio consulting company said, you should send this to like some of your radio friends in Detroit and see what they think. I think it's great. So I did. And every radio station in Detroit asked me if they could play it, um, around Christmas time. And I was shocked because I'm thinking it's not available anywhere. It's been 10 years since I released anything on iTunes. And I didn't even know how to make it available to people because people started asking me where I could buy it. I do interviews and stuff like that. And um, the rest is, is kind of history. I went back in the studio, recorded another single and another single and another single. And once I got to five, people were like, well, when's your album coming out? 
And I said, huh, okay, well, I've got 10 years worth of material to write about. And, uh, and I did. And here we are. Nice. Music. That was like the long version of that story. I know you asked a simple well, question. But, but. but I do wonder about it. I mean, look, this, is, this podcast is not my day job, right? <laughs> okay. It's not what I, what I do. It's something that we do on top of that. And so I'm conscious of, because this is a public-facing sort of, you know, it, it's art for me. It's my, yeah. it's my hobby, right. you know. Uh, I can't sing as well as you can. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so you. I absolutely understand where you're coming from. The mm-hmm. difference is that you're a, you know, your day job is uh, being a public personality yeah. as well. And so I think your company, you know, must be concerned with the public image. I mean, I, I wonder if... You know, I mean, if you were doing gangster rap or if you were doing satanic heavy metal or something like that, would it be a bigger problem than... Uh, I'm, I'm sure it might. <laughs> but, but honestly, ever since I started writing music, I've always written music about myself. Right. And I am 150% authentically me in my music. Right, right. You know? So you don't have any of your co-anchors going, hey, is that song about me? Mm, I mean, <laughs> that's not to say that I'm not going to write about other people. You know, um, there there is always a story and, and uh, a meaning behind each song. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your news career. How did you wind up here in Detroit? Wow. Uh, you know, I remember exactly where I was. Um, I was actually working in Denver, Colorado before here, and my agent called and said, hey, would you ever consider going to Detroit? And I'm originally from Chicago, and I've driven through Detroit many a times. And so I said, yeah. You know, and I remember flying out here, auditioning and thinking that the city is really interesting. This was back in 2013. Uh, So were things turning the corner yet? mm, I wouldn't say things were turning the corner just yet. Okay. I would say, actually, the day that I left Denver, Detroit filed for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So that was the big story in Denver, that here's this major city filing for bankruptcy. So uh, I came in, and I would say Detroit was probably at... um, a very interesting point yeah. in its history. And I watched, I mean, uh, WDIV is the only station in downtown Detroit. And I watched it sort of be rebuilt. I watched the city kind of be rebuilt. And there's a lot still going on even right now. And so it was a really interesting time to actually move here and to see all of the change that's happening, you know? Hmm. Uh, you know, I am like you. I have, you know, as a broadcaster, moved from mm-hmm. city to city to city. Yeah. I, I know what it's like to sell all your stuff and pack it into boxes. Uh, I've been here in Detroit for about four years. Okay. So we've probably gone through a similar adjustment of learning mm-hmm. about the city. You're, you're probably about two years ahead of me, I guess, yeah. uh, in terms of that course. I mean, what has surprised you in the course of getting accustomed to the city? I would say what surprised me the most is how welcoming people here are. Uh, especially when I bring people from out of town and they have questions or, um, you know, if we go out to a restaurant or a clothing store and people say, oh, is this your first time here? And, you know, I'll point to my friends that are from out of town and say, oh, they're from wherever. And Detroiters are so welcoming. And even up to a year, I want to say, of me being brand new, people were still seeing me at the mall at 12 Oaks, Somerset, or downtown Detroit along the riverfront. And they would say, hey, welcome to Detroit. You know, and I'm like, I've been here a year and people are still being so incredibly friendly, you know. So that's one thing that surprised me. Not that I thought that people were going to be mean here at all, but I've lived all over. And at least from the experience in many other cities, this is the sixth TV news market I worked in. Uh, this, the people here in Detroit are the friendliest. Yeah. I can say that with ease. I will tell you this. They're friendlier than Boston. I oh, really? There. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, maybe a few other cities I can think of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, no, but uh, the other thing I will say about this city is that, you know, all I really knew was cars. You mm-hmm. know, cars in Motown were kind of all I knew. Okay. Uh, when, when I got hired to come here to Detroit, it was not on my short list of places to live. Okay. Uh, and originally I had no intention of staying here. Hmm. Uh, and I didn't know how deep the culture uh, and the history of this city is. And once you start diving into it, Mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing. It really is. Uh, And I've never seen a a, a city... I mean, it's got that... It's got all the advantages of a big city, you know, major sports teams, right. all the big, all of them, all the big concerts come through town. You know, mm-hmm. you've got all those world class museums, all that stuff, and yet it's very much got a small city feel to yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, in that, you know, the population isn't huge. It's people know people. It's yeah. it's not like New York or L.A. in that sense. But if you ever want to know how big 
Metro Detroit is. Drive from Detroit to like Lake Orion. Yeah. You know, drive from Troy to West Bloomfield or Novi and Howell, and you'll realize, okay, wow, this is a really big metropolis. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. No. In, in terms of area, but yeah. but culturally, it's it yeah, it's, it's and it's very welcoming. I think very welcoming. I think you're right about that. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go through a couple of these songs. And, okay. And uh, you know we will play them. Uh, so tell us about them. Starting with the single, which is "I'm Leaving." So yeah, I'm leaving. And I don't like telling all of what my songs are deeply about. I'm Leaving is my latest single. I released it uh, this month, actually. And I wanted this to serve as an empowerment song for anybody that's in a bad relationship, a bad friendship, or a bad job, to just really give them the courage to, to say, I'm out. Like, I'm, I'm done. I'm leaving. This shouldn't come as a surprise. Gave you the best years of my life. Of my life It's like my contract is up I put in my time Five years Now I'm living my best life Not that I don't love you But I love me more This chapter is over Close the door This is my resignation letter Oh, I deserve better So I Found me somebody who loves me for me. It is what it is. Don't try to talk me out of this because I'm leaving. All right, that's I'm Leaving. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's also listen to one of my favorite tracks on the album. Okay, what's that one? 90s R&B. Oh. This, is, this is very much what it, you know, I said that to myself yeah. when I first started listening. I was like, this sounds like a 90s R&B to me. And then, if, sure enough, there's a there's a track called that. Yeah, there. this is one of my favorite songs to actually write. Uh, 90s R&B, giving uh, credit to all of the 90s R&B artists and, and ones that are still, you know, making music today. But that I grew up on, that I listened to, and that I have been influenced in some way uh, in my own music career, and yeah, this is 90s R&B, and one of my favorite songs to, to perform and, and to write. I want that 90s R&B, that Monica and Brandy, yeah, what you know about that jagged edge, give me some voice, man, I want that music from way back when, on the radio with Mariah, and Tyrese, Aaliyah, and the WB, give me that one twelve. I need the 90s, that 90s R&B Everybody has that one song that takes you back Back in the day, ain't no sliding in them DMs But it goes down in the DMs You had to wait to holler at Charlie on the weekend Remember staying up late and watching BET Jam So yo, MTV reps, can I go back To when they played the music videos I guess that's how we go Let's listen to a slower jam now. This is one that makes sense coming from you. Uh, (laughs) This is Breaking News. Tell us about this song. So Breaking News was a fun one to write for the idea that I wanted it to be a breaking news story. But instead of, you know, uh, an actual criminal, I wanted it to be a crime of somebody stealing my heart instead. And so it was fun kind of playing with words, um, talking about my producer and giving the description of, of the suspect who, you know, has all the qualities of my wife. And it was fun writing, and, and people seem to love this one too. Breaking news story, breaking, breaking news story. 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 It's such a typical breaking news story. 
but I've been shot in my heart And police are still searching the she Still hasn't been caught It's a suspect description She's 5'5 five, five with green eyes She ain't like other women She got her nails in, keep her hair right For the crime, she's definitely the one who did it And until I catch her, they say Breaking news, breaking news I love you Breaking news, breaking news I love you little words But you know what it's worth Alright, so the new album just came out in November It's called Newsic mm-hmm. uh, Congratulations Thank you very much That's It was a... Uh... Uh... A labor of love. A lot of personal songs on there. Um, I got some songs, uh, songs in there about my kids, about uh, my parents, about my wife, about um, my stepping away from music and, and being back and excited to be able to write music again and have music that people enjoy and people listen to. Well, it's a long time coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, people can check it out at your website, right? Yes. Which is everodcasme.com. Everodcasme.com. There you can read more about me. Uh, you can contact me through there. All my social media is on there. And all of the upcoming dates, if you sign up for my mailing list, you'll know about when I'm performing uh, different shows next and all that stuff. Perfect. And, of course, people can watch you on the news every day. Every single morning, 4.30 to 7 on WDIV, Local 4 News Today, and then again at noon on all Channel right. 4. One last thing before we get out of here. Let's you do got, it. you got to play a little game. You ready? I love games. Let's do it. Oh, my gosh. You have your own theme music? <laughs> wow. We're, profession- We're professionals I here. I love it. I can hook you up with my guy uh, over at uh, <laughs> WDIV there. Uh, what is the first place that you take out-of-town visitors? First place I take out-of-town visitors, I have two. Central Kitchen in Campus Marshes or Townhouse. Townhouse, if you sit outside on the patio, you get a nice view of like Woodward Avenue and kind of like the heart of Detroit. And then Central Kitchen, because have you had their fries? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been to Townhouse. I haven't been to Central Kitchen. Central Kitchen, it's right there in Campus Marshes, right next to Roast, yep. right next to Shake Shack. The best fries I've ever had. You get two dipping sauces with it. I know you wanted a short answer, but no, I, I'm really no, no. passionate I, I, about I, the fries. I, you you got Central a dipping so, sauce of choice? Uh, both of them. Okay. I don't even know what they are. All right. I just dip and just eat. Get one of each. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dennis Archer Jr. It's his restaurant. Uh, what is your favorite song by a Detroit artist? Favorite song by a Detroit artist? Oh, man. Now, that's a tough question because you can go old. Mm-hmm. School, or you can go new school. So, can I pick one of both? Sure. I'm going to go Eminem, Eight Mile. That's an excellent choice. No, Eminem, Lose Yourself. Let me do that. Right, yeah. And then, if I go old school, I'm going to say Aretha Franklin, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to say Respect. All right. Yeah. Uh, If you could perform at any outdoor festival here in the Detroit area, which one would you want to perform at? An outdoor festival. I performed at a lot of them, actually. Oh, what have you already performed at? I performed at Shane Park. Okay. I performed at the Ribs and Soul R&B Music Festival. Oh, yeah, I've been to that. That's a good festival. Um, I would I would say Shane Park. Okay. Again. Yeah, that'd be the, I the mean, venue like to play. I mean, it's like one of the most incredible venues in town. Nice. What's the Detroit activity that's next on your to-do list? Uh, I, need, <laughs> I need to do the, the cycle, the pedal pub. Oh, yes. I, need to do the pedal I haven't pub. done that yet. I, I have not either. I have never done that, but I always see them up and down in the streets and I'm like, I got to do that one of these days. Is that weird being a television personality? Do you worry about, you know, pedal bubbing in public? Yeah. You do? But <laughs> at some point you got to live your life, right? I guess so. You know, it shows up on Instagram. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'll write you a note to your boss and say, excuse <laughs> you. Uh, what is your favorite waterfront activity? Uh, surfing. I know I can't do that here. Oh, okay. I was going to say, where do you do that? <laughs> well, I, I love going to L.A. and surfing. Here, I would say um, my best friend's boat, we always go down on the Detroit River. So, wait a minute. You're a television news anchor mm-hmm. who sings mm-hmm. and surfs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not ju- good I just, at surfing. I just feel inferior. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I was good at surfing. I, I go out to L.A., I surf, but it's always with a surf instructor. Make sure that I don't get eaten by a shark. Uh, how long have you been doing it? Uh, since I was in college, oh, off and on. A long time. You know, yeah, we just got back actually from L.A. and I went surfing there. It's on my Instagram. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite Detroit charity? Uh, yeah, the Motown Museum. 
Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They are, I mean, it's incredible. Have, have you been? Yeah. It is phenomenal. And, and I remember it took me a long time to actually get there. And when I got there, I was like, why have I not been here before? There, there's some people move here and yeah. then they don't go. No. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. And I bring all of my out-of-town guests there. Right. I mean, just seeing Michael Jackson's hat and, and glove, mm-hmm. phenomenal. Nice. Did I win? You won. Does the dinging mean that I won? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we, we don't have any prizes on this show. I'm well, it's okay. Um, well, look, Everod cast me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for I'm so sorry me. Becky couldn't be here. She would have loved this. Shout out to Becky, this. though. Yeah. Get so well soon. Hopefully she's feeling better. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on the album. Thank it's you called very much. Music. We'll yep. put a link in the show notes, and everybody should go check it out. And, of course, they should watch you every single day on Channel 4. Channel 4, 4.30 to 7 a.m. and again at noon. All right. Until next time, Detroit's moving. See, we even got a slogan here. I like it. I like, right? It's, I like it's it. Like, uh, yeah, it's like a television show. Detroit's moving. Keep up. The D. Brave. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.